Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to No DQ and A video right here on NoDQ.com as well as the YouTube channel and No DQ and A videos affiliate RingsideNews.com. Just two weekends now until WrestleMania. Hard to believe it is right upon us. It seemed like it was so far out in the distant, but here we are, two weeks until WrestleMania. NoDQ.com has you covered for all the latest news, rumors, and of course. Live on location coverage. I will be there in Santa Clara and San Jose for all that. Got your questions here from spring.me slash Aaron Rift. Let's get started with the first one today from the other Z. Hey Aaron, keep up the good work. Thank you for that. Hope to see you at WrestleMania. Are you at all surprised that AJ is still willing to work with the company after all the crap that's happened between her husband and her employer? Well, technically, CM Punk can say that he's not an employee. He's an independent contractor, but that's a whole other topic. Look at WWE. It is called the wrestling business. That is the key word, business. AJ Lee is doing business with WWE. It is her job, and you put business first. You do not get personal feelings mixed into business. That is the attitude that I believe AJ Lee has and everybody working in WWE has. At the end of the day, regardless of how you feel on a personal level, it is a business. You're going to work, you're collecting a paycheck, end of story. Now maybe she's not quite as passionate about WWE as she once was. Only she can answer that question, but I think that she is doing what she should be doing and that's being a professional and continuing to show up to work and do her job regardless of what's going on behind the scenes and in her personal life. All right, this one comes from Creature13. Does Dean Ambrose need to win at WrestleMania since he hasn't won a match at a pay-per-view since payback? Well, WWE's hoping that people like you aren't keeping track of his win-loss record. Um, here's the thing. He definitely needs something. Dean Ambrose has been on the decline now for several months, especially since he, he had that match with Bray Wyatt where the television monitor exploded in his face, and he lost all those matches to Wyatt because they were grooming Bray Wyatt for The Undertaker. And he hasn't really rebounded since then. Um, but at the same time, there's other guys in that ladder match that need the win just as much, if not more. You could say Dolph Ziggler needs it more, but Ziggler's really been at the same position now for several years. I don't think losing this match will hurt him any more than he's already been damaged. Damn the barking dog. That dog out there must be a Dolph Ziggler fan and disagrees with me. Hence the interrupting of the video, but got to wing it here. Got to keep going, even though the dog's getting louder. You also have Daniel Bryan in the mix, and maybe the dog is crapping out there because, after all, Daniel Bryan is a turd, apparently, according to Dean Ambrose and Dolph Ziggler. Daniel Bryan, of the three of them, he's the one that has really seen the biggest decline because he was at the highest peak last year at WrestleMania, winning the WWE World Heavyweight title in the main event, having the big celebration, and it's just been downhill ever since. Uh, so of the three of them, Daniel Bryan really needs to win the most, in my opinion. He should be the one to win that ladder match, and you know he needs some kind of win you know, coming off of last year's WrestleMania. Uh, but really what would be best for all three guys is to have the match of the night, steal the show, go out there and prove to the fans that they are correct in cheering for them and getting behind them. Um, all three of them have lost a lot of momentum, no question. WWE's done a very poor job with, with the way they portrayed their baby faces in recent months. Uh, so all three of them have something to prove at WrestleMania, and that's just one of many reasons why that will most likely end up being the match of the night. So, you know, hopefully those guys can deliver and show the guys in WWE, the head honchos, that we are the best that you got and we should be treated better. All right, this one comes from Godzilla Star. Hey, Aaron, I don't really care for the main event of WrestleMania 31 with Brock versus Reigns, but I thought I would ask you the following. Are you looking forward to it? If you are... Is it the match itself you wish to see, or the finish of the match, or the fan reaction? 
Well, I'm definitely intrigued about this match, but not for the right reasons. The right reason would be because the two of them are going to have a great match and we're going to see the crowning of a new champion and the start of a new glory period in WWE. I don't see that happening. What I think is going to happen is the crowd is either going to completely crap on the match or, as we've seen during previous WrestleManias in the large stadium, uh, you know, with a five-hour show between your four hours and your pre-show and all this other added crap that they have, um, you know, fans get burned out after a while. And I think that there's a very decent chance at this point, especially if this match goes on last, that the crowd just isn't going to care. They're going to be dead silent, and it's going to be really embarrassing. Um, and it's going to make Roman Reigns look like the most undeserving champion in WWE history. Um, you know, I am interested in the finish. I mean, Reigns should absolutely win, in my opinion. WWE has gone this far with him. Uh, to me, it would just be a complete waste if, if Brock Lesnar retained the title. Uh, you know, they decided on Reigns to be in the main event. They got to go through with it now, give him the title, and see what happens after that. Maybe turn him heel if necessary, but, you know, they need to go with him as the new champion. The whole idea of Brock Lesnar being the part-time champion, it's done. You know, Brock ended the streak. You need to go with your original idea of having Brock put over the next big star, or at least the guy that you want to be the next big star. Might not work, but, you know, you've gone this far. You just got to go all the way with it. All right, got this question from OS Crod 2 Hey, Aaron, how would you feel about an NXT pay-per-view at the Hammerstein Ballroom? Well, I would not mind that idea. I actually think it would work out well. I mean, that would be literally the only WWE-type show that would work in that venue because you know how those fans are, any kind of Raw or SmackDown event, uh, you know, they're going to be uh, very rebellious. And I think that with an NXT pay-per-view, you would get the fans into it. You know, they love Kevin Owens, they love Sami Zayn, and, you know, they love... Um, a Tommy and Finn Balor, uh, all those guys, you know, the, the the smart wrestling fans, the hardcore fans, they love all those guys, and uh, they, they would very much be into the show. You know, they might try to go into business for themselves and do some goofy chants, but, you know, they, they like all the guys on the roster. So, yeah, I do think that that idea would work for that venue. Um, so I would not mind seeing it. I, I think it would be a good idea. Uh, to do that at some point, you know, get out of Orlando and maybe have an NXT pay-per-view special at the Hammerstein Ballroom. I, I would be all for that. All right, this one comes from Seth Rollins Guy. Hey, Aaron, how would you feel about the idea of bringing a couple of NXT guys into the IC title ladder match or even the Battle Royal at WrestleMania? I think both Sami Zayn and Adrian Neville would thrive in that ladder match. Please answer in video. If, if there was any match to put those guys in, that might work because, you know, Daniel Bryan isn't in any jeopardy of being um, outshined by somebody like Sami Zayn or Adrian Neville. If anything, guys like Zayn and Neville would add to the match, but you already have a strong lineup as it is. Um, I don't see WWE putting those guys in the Battle Royal just because it, it would seem like a waste of their talent. Uh, you know, it, there were, it really wouldn't serve much purpose. Um, I, I, I would be very surprised if WWE put the NXT guys in a match at WrestleMania just because they don't, they do have that fear of those guys going out there and outshining uh, the main talent. I mean, I guess in a battle royal, you know, they could just be in there for a few minutes and they get thrown out and wouldn't really make that big of a difference. But uh, I don't really see the need for them to do that. You know, if Sami Zayn's going to make his debut at WrestleMania, I'd rather him be in an actual match than just be some guy in a battle royal that gets tossed out in two minutes. I mean, uh, that's just my opinion. I think he should come in and look strong. You know, if you're going to bother putting him on the show, you know, actually do something significant with him. All right, this one comes from Kayfabe Candy Ass. Aaron, would you agree that as of right now, the WWE title match is at best the fourth most anticipated match between Orton Rollins, Cena, Rusev, and Triple H Sting? maybe even behind Bray and Taker. Is it possible for WWE to change that? Um, well, I, I doubt it, really. I think that maybe with your casual audience, it is maybe the third most anticipated match, maybe more than Cena and Rusev, maybe more than Triple H and Sting, for that matter, because Sting is a guy that um, 
caters to your older fan base. Um, but to me, I think to most of us watching this video, I think that that match is probably the fifth most anticipated anticipated match on the card. Although you didn't even mention the ladder match here. So uh, that's pretty sad that WWE has done that bad of a job building up this match. And as I mentioned in previous videos, um, with Undertaker, uh, you know, he, he's got that match with Bray Wyatt. You got Sting. You got the ladder match. And uh, when it comes down to the match between Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns, uh, you really don't have all that much interest. You know, Paul Heyman has done a tremendous job building up that match. But without Paul Heyman, I don't know if anybody would give a damn about this match. I mean, maybe you're Roman Reigns fangirls. Um, and here we go with people going to accuse me of hating Roman Reigns. I do not hate Roman Reigns. I thought seven, eight months ago it was the right decision for Roman Reigns to win the Rumble and go on to WrestleMania. I was all for that idea. WWE's just done a piss poor job of uh, how they executed the Roman Reigns push. That's the bottom line. Nothing against the character Roman Reigns. Nothing against the guy. I just think WWE dropped the ball, and uh, you know they have nobody to blame but themselves for Roman Reigns not working out. All right, got this question here from Derek J. 1993. Hey Aaron, why doesn't WWE have their cameras on different sides of the arena every other week or so like they used to? Um, I'm a little surprised that somebody actually brought this up. I mean, I definitely noticed it, but it's not something that I, I think most people would uh, notice. You know, uh, the way it is every week is you have uh, the hard camera and you have the stage and the ramp to the left of the hard camera. And uh, back in the day, there would be some weeks where it would be the opposite. Um, not really sure why they do it. And what's even more interesting is, you know, Triple H talks about how you know, NXT, they want to have everything with the layout similar to uh, Raw and SmackDown. But on NXT, you have the stage and the ramp to the right of the hard camera, which I always found interesting if, if they're trying to, uh, you know, replicate Raw and SmackDown as much as possible with the NXT layout. Um, so that's an interesting question. I'm not really sure why. Maybe uh, it's just so they can have something consistent every week and uh, it's just easier on the entire production team. I mean, that that's really the only thing I can come up with. Uh, but that, that's definitely an interesting question. All right, that'll do it for this edition of No DQ&A Video. Stay tuned to NoDQ.com for the very latest, and I will see you guys next time.